Hi everyone. Hope everyone is fine and good day. This is Raju here. In our earlier uh, session, we had seen a basic introduction about the telecommunication. Now, in this session, we are going to discuss about roaming, starting from basic on how exactly the roaming gate established between the two different uh, operators and how seamless connectivity can be established. So the topic that we are going to discuss is on GSM roaming. Okay. GSM roaming. Now we'll come to the full form of GSM uh, later. First, let us understand what is meant by roaming. Now let's say A is one particular location and B is one particular location. Okay. Now this A is having a certain, this particular location is having a certain coverage. Now let's say, or we can say boundary. Okay. Now till this boundary, the operator or the telco companies, they will be able to provide the network till this boundary. Okay. Now, whenever a subscriber, subscriber means we, the uh, individuals who are using mobile phones, whenever the individuals or the mobile user move from their home location, this is termed as your home location. Now, when a subscriber, what I'm saying subscriber, these are all important terms. Okay, subscriber means we who are using mobile handset individuals using mobile handsets okay now when a subscriber from location a from their home location is moving out of a particular boundary till where the coverage of that particular telecom operator is and trying to use the network or the telecom services of other telecom operator in different location okay now let's say this is the boundary okay now in this boundary the subscriber a subscriber came to b location and he started using the services of b now what is happening he is using, he is leaving home location coming to B using the different network which is which is not belonging to his home location. Okay. So that term is nothing but roaming. What it is? Roaming. So in order to define in a very simple language, what is roaming? When a person moves from home location to a different location and he uses the services of different telco operator it is termed as roaming now there are two different kinds of roamings two different type of roaming okay now what are those two different types one is your national roaming and other is your international roaming now the concept of national roaming in India, it has been taken out. Earlier there was a roaming concept of national. National roaming means what? National roaming means from one state to another state. So here, now let's say if you are in a particular state A, and you are in particular state B, moving to particular state B, either you can use the services of, uh, let's say that this is home and this is your roaming zone. Let us assume that because you are moving from location A to location B. Now here, let's say the operator is X and here you are having operator X and operator Y. Now, when we are moving from this particular location A and uh, uh, latching, latching means you are trying to register in this, uh, that we will see uh, in uh, home uh, location update, what exactly is latching means. So when you are latching into the network uh, X or Y. Now, when you are latching into the network X, what well, does it mean uh, roaming? Yes. Why? Because earlier, before the concept of this national roaming was removed, it was like a boundary. 
okay now you are crossing the boundary and you are using the uh, same your home uh, telco operator network but in a different location that's why it, it is termed as roaming or you can use altogether different new telco operator network other than your uh, parent uh, operator network so in either of the case this is nothing but your roaming and that term is called as national roaming now since this national roaming is already uh, wiped out and uh, uh, everyone knows that now in India we are not used anywhere you can go and there is no roaming concept that exists. Okay, so we will mainly focus on international roaming. What we will do, we will mainly focus on international roaming. So let us try to understand that how international roaming functions. I will take it out and let us see on international roaming. Okay, international roaming now what happens in international roaming now let's say this is country a and this is your country b okay now before actually the subscriber subscriber from here or the subscribers from country b whether they want to come to country a or they want to go to country b then there has to be a network how this network is uh, established so before the network is established there is some testing that happens and in order to do that testing there is a process that is followed now from either of the business side business people okay mainly the marketing people okay because they are mainly focused on the increasing the revenue of the organization so marketing team on either of the uh, operator side they will coordinate with each other via some mode of communication that may be in your uh, form of email or initially via telephone uh, seeking that okay we want to establish a connectivity between both of us in order to have a seamless connectivity for the subscribers roaming from our country to your country okay now once that is agreed a formal uh, uh, email exchange happens okay and in the formal email exchange there will be a discussion of some uh, pricing okay once everything is finalized then uh, they will discuss on the pricing that is called as iot which is not internet of things it is inter operator tariff and also that there will be a exchange of IR21 document. This document is mainly used for configuring the network because it has signaling info, okay, and all the series like indices, okay. Let me just write it properly. NDC. NDC means national destination code okay now this ndc's and uh, signaling information is being exchanged uh, between the two telecom operators and what they will do once the uh, signaling information is exchanged once the tariffs are finalized now why this interoperator tariff has to be uh, negotiated because when a subscriber from country a move to country b he is using the resources of country b telecom operator right so this b is incurring some charges now who has to bear the charges b will not bear the charges why because he is giving the service so he has to get a benefit of it so for that the iot this tariff negotiation happens and based on the tariff negotiation once there is a common consensus between both of them then this exchange of uh, document happens your ir21 and iot happens now once that document are exchanged and everything is fine from both the sides then the network configuration happens now how that network configuration is going to happen that we will see it okay hope you all are following this because this is very very important to understand the basic of how exactly the roaming happens before we exactly move in detail phase by phase into the telecommunication uh, uh, lectures so please be concentrated and try to understand in detail if there is any problem in understanding or if there is any doubt or any clarification that is required please write a post in the video below okay so 
now this i am taking it out and uh, we will see that what exactly happens to establish the roaming now what we are having the people from uh, sub, uh, country a and people from country b what people telco people okay or the business telecom business uh, persons now the marketing people from here and here they negotiated and they came up to a common understanding on iot part this iot part is nothing but your inter operator tariff that is the when uh, subscribers utilize the resources or the services when subscriber uses the resources or the services of either of the network okay they incur the charge that charges how much has to be paid that is negotiated now this charges is what now when you go into a roaming zone or whenever you have a mobile what all you will do as a basic services you will make a call okay you will make a call now what are the different type of call you will make you will make moc which is called as mobile originated call and you will make mtc that is your mobile terminated call okay you can use gprs service right you can use vas value added services you can use sms services you can uh, uh, use the entertainment uh, services like uh, downloading wallpapers or uh, 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 looking into your voicemail kind of services uh, actually this comes in your voice only so there are these are the high level services what we normally use now in moc mtc also what kind of call you will you make in moc if you see then what are the different type of calls that you can make i'll just write it in detail okay now if if it is moc moc is what mobile originated call okay now the first thing is you let's say you are in country a or uh, for example let's say from india you went to usa okay now from operator a in india you you are using the services of operator b so what all type of services you will use in moc in mobile originated call mobile originated call means we are making an outgoing call this is nothing but you are making an outgoing call so in this case either you can make a call within us you can make a call back to your home which is called as back home call okay this within us it is called as local call because you are latching in us and you are making call within us so that is local call so local call doesn't mean that it is of less price or it is like a call you are making in your home network the term is local call because you are latching in the say in the location and you are making a call within that location back home call and you can call to any other country any other country means instead of back home or making call within us itself you can call to any of the other country you can call to philippines you can call to dubai you can call to uh, let's say switzerland all those things so that comes under your any other uh, country okay you can have also call forwarding right you can make a call forwarding scenario if that is uh, allowed if this service is allowed okay service is allowed then only you can do such kind of calls so these are some basic call scenarios what we can do or what you can originate from your mobile and mtc is what from wherever you are getting a call irrespective from which location and all you are getting a call then that is your termination call okay so for and also here uh, uh, let's say marine calls will be there marine calls 
that is you are traveling in a ship or uh, you are in a uh, water uh, mode of uh, travel and you are making calls or receiving calls then that comes as a marine calls and uh, or a satellite calls okay and there will be some premium calls because premium calls are what you are trying to use some special services of this particular operator usa if these are allowed you will be allowed to make or use the services only if these are allowed and negotiated between the two operators so these are the basic call scenarios what uh, people use when they are in a roaming very very basic call and other than that internet on all are there that we will see as we progress so now for every type of a call whether you are making any type of call there is a charge that is getting incurred so for each type of call what should be the charge what should be the charge that is negotiated and then the finalization happens in the form of iot so iot is what this is what i have explained interoperator tariff is basically talks about that what is the charge that is going to incur by using the services of the other telco operator in roaming zone so that services whatever you are using the services uses services has to be paid back to operator b or the uh, country in which you are roaming so hope till this you understood it okay now we will see in detail in our next uh, video thank you thank you very much for watching the video very patiently and try to gain knowledge maximum out of uh, the videos thank you everyone